month, we are very pleased to receive Patrick Mutzenberg, director of the CCPR Center based in Geneva. Uh, the CCPR Center was created in 2008, uh, same as UPR Info, and we are uh, a similar structure, a small organization working on a specific human rights mechanism. And obviously the CCR, CCPR Center is working on the Human Rights Committee. So Patrick, thank you very much for, for this interview. Uh, thank you for um, having us in your office. Can you please explain us uh, your work and the work of the CCPR Center? Good morning, good morning Roland. Uh, the Center for Civil and Political Rights, an NGO based in Geneva, and we are supporting national NGOs to better cooperate with the Human Rights Committee for the regular review of the uh, reports before the Human Rights Committee. Uh, the idea is to support their work, the NGO's work, uh, for the, before the Human Rights Committee for the review and also for the follow-up of the recommendations that are usually adopted at the end of the session by the Human Rights Committee. You have an interesting approach where you start before the review in the country and then in Geneva with the NGOs and then back in the country and including that follow-up. Can mm -hmm. you detail those three steps? Exactly, that's really our approach to have a long-term approach with the NGOs and our partners on and, and the field. The idea is to really to support the NGOs to prepare the NGO reports and also to provide them with an in-depth knowledge of the ICCPR and the way uh, the committee is reviewing the, the state reports. Uh, so we are organizing regular workshop with national NGOs uh, on the field. And, and then we support also the NGOs to come in Geneva and to present the report uh, and to lobby to the report the experts. and to meet the experts uh, of the Human Rights Committee uh, during the review of the, of the concerned states. And then at the end, after one year, uh, we returned usually to the country with a committee member mm. uh, to assess the implementation of the recommendation and discuss with the authorities to know exactly what has been done in terms of implementation because we consider that the m more important work for the NGOs is really the follow-up work to ensure that something concrete mm. uh, happens when we have the when, when we have the recommendations. And this model is very interesting and could be used for other mechanisms and in the framework of the UPR that really uh, enables the NGOs to have a long-term engagement in the process and for you to really follow them mm -hmm. step by step mm -hmm. through the different stages. The CCPR has also launched interesting initiatives such as webcasting with other NGOs, but I think CCPR Center was the first to initiate that. Webcasting of the reviews at mm -hmm. the, the HRC committee. And uh, can you tell, me, can tell us a bit more about this and other initiatives, groundbreaking initiatives you have? I think it's, it's very important to make sure that we, there is a strong link between the, the, the field, the, the national NGOs, the civil society and the Human Rights Committee mm -hmm. on the, the meetings here in Geneva. And it's true that with a group of NGOs, we now devoted our energy to, uh, to make sure that we can also webcast the, the treaty bodies work, and not only the Human Rights Committee, but all the treaty bodies. And we have a kind of group of NGOs following that, and we have a de dedicated website, mm -hmm. treatybodywebcast.org, where you can follow live plus the archive uh, on each treaty body session. I think one of the other interesting things from the from the from the center, but also from the Human Rights Committee, is this development of the the follow-up uh, grading system. Now the, the the Human Rights Committee started to uh, assess and uh, in terms of the qualitative assessment, uh, the implementation of the recommendations, mm -hmm. and they start to grade the level of implementation with a grade A, B, and C. Ah. And we have a full uh, grade, full implementation with a grade A, partial impl implementation with mm -hmm. a B1 and B2, and failure to implement with a C. And each state is going to, to this review, and the CCPR Center and the NGOs, national NGOs, follow the same approach and start also to grade the level of implementation of each recommendation. So I think that would be very useful for the UPR yeah, mechanism. So it's a question of exactly. implementation. Yeah. How this could be uh, mm. reciprocated on mm -hmm. other mechanisms. Exactly. Yeah. And CCPR also tries to create links between the Human Rights Committee and the UPR. Your NGO is engaged in um, feeding the UPR in terms of how states are complying with mm -hmm. the Human Rights Committee obligations. Mm -hmm. So can you also tell us more about this? Again, it's all uh, this approach of the follow-up and to make sure that the different mechanisms are not split but are really working in the same mm -hmm. comprehensive approach and to make sure that 
the findings from the Human Rights Committee are taken well into consideration by the UPR and the other mm -hmm. treaty bodies, but not only the findings, but also the level of implementation. It's very important just not to mention recommendations, but also to inform the, the working groups on the progress or the failure uh, made with regard to the implementation of the recommendations. So we really feed the, the system with our assessment on those recommendations. And today is the deadline for countries to be reviewed next um, May, mm -hmm. April and May at the UPR. So you are submitting a report and you had a training recently as well in this framework. Exactly. Again, on, on, on Uzbekistan, but also on some other countries, we really try to work with NGOs, the same one that we used to work for the Human Rights Committee, and, and to bring into consideration the recommendations from the Human Rights Committee and to make sure that those recommendations will be well addressed by the, the UPR in the UPR process. Well, I think this is very important to, for those mechanisms to be working better together and, and the work that you're doing is, uh, is quite important in that, in that respect. And um, a new UPR influence, the UPR Center will, be, uh, will continue to keep uh, looking for ways to, to work together such as maybe trainings or yeah. other things uh, this way. That would be fantastic, and I'm sure we can also use the, the other way around, make sure that the UPR recommendations are well also uh, discussed in the, U, in the Human Rights Committee or the Treaty Bodies yes. work. And I think this, has, this has been the case on uh, a couple of countries where recommendations from the UPR were discussed at Treaty Bodies, right? Exactly. Especially those refused by the mm -hmm. State Party. Because then, it's, exactly, because then it's much more difficult to, for a State Party to, to refuse or to or to uh, try to escape uh, before a treaty body since it's a, since the, 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 the legal provisions is completely mm -hmm. I mean it's a bit different. Yeah. Great. So thank you very much for uh, you, for this well. information and we'll be looking forward to uh, thank you. to read the, the, the engagement, to read the report of, of the CCPR Center at the at the next UPR. Thank you for thank the interview. You.